if you would like my um, my face as your main picture, which is completely your preference. If you don't want it, I will not be offended. But if you do, there's nine little dots in the right upper corner um, and you want speak of you. And that's going to make one main screen with little pictures at the top. And then you can click on my little box and click pin video and that will stop it jumping between everyone's video. Um, everyone on Facebook, hello. I am just going through Zoom and then I will be with you in a second. I think that is actually everything. So everybody, um, let's start with the very basics. Hello, welcome, my name's Samantha. Please, 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 if you have any injuries, um, if you're feeling sick, if you're not feeling yourself, then um, take a step back. Always be very mindful of your bodies, the areas of your bodies that hurt, maybe avoid things that are gonna put extra pressure on them. You have to be your own judge. I'm not there to make sure that you're okay. So please, 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 I can only ask, that you know your body better than anyone else. If something doesn't feel right, pull yourself out, take a rest, take a drink of water. Um, we're gonna start standing today, which I don't usually do, but because one of the most requested things was posture, we're gonna start with some alignment and we're gonna do a little bit of posture work today. And no matter how good your posture is, I think we can all do with improving it. Um, there's, there's always work to be done. And it's nice to just kind of check in with yourself and just make sure that you are nice and aligned and your posture is nice and in check. So when you are ready, come to standing on your mat. Bring your feet either together or about hip width apart. Arms down by your side and just open your arms out. And we're just gonna start with our breathing and grounding. So I just want you to really feel the mat or the carpet or wherever you are, the floor beneath your feet and start to feel those feet grounding down. Try and evenly distribute the weight between the feet so you're not rocking forward or back. Try and ground down through the heels. And maybe just lift those toes and give them a little wiggle. See if you can keep your balance when you're lifting those toes and just spread. And then on Zoom, if you could make sure that your microphone is muted, that would be lovely so that we don't interrupt everyone else. Thank you. And just make sure that your toes are just wiggling around so that you keep your balance. And then we're just going to ground those toes back down onto the mat. Really feel the earth beneath your feet and let's close our eyes. And it's almost quite hard to stand without swaying when you're standing with your eyes closed. So we're really gonna try and ground ourselves down in the mat so that we're almost like a tree rooted down. Deep inhale, and as you inhale, I want you to start to feel long and tall through your spine. Exhale, drop the shoulders. And really breathe into that spine. Inhale. Exhale. And try when you breathe not to draw the shoulders up towards the ears. Try and keep them level. Inhale. Almost breathing into the side of your ribs. And exhale. So as you breathe, your body shouldn't really move. Those shoulders should stay nice and aligned. Inhale and exhale. And as usual, we're just gonna go to our, our lovely place of a still calm mind. So I want you to take everything that you had to do before and everything that you need to do after and just expel it from your mind. We want the mind clear and empty. So take that imaginary broom and start to sweep the mind clean. I find it nice to visualize the mind actually becoming free of thoughts, almost like I'm sweeping words away, words and pictures, and leaving a nice empty, bright room with only my breath flowing through, entering and exhaling. 
As we inhale, feel the breath filling the lungs, wash through the body. And exhale, release navel to spine. Inhale, start to drop those shoulders down. Feel the shoulder blades trickle down your spine, lengthening up. Exhale. Unclench your jaw. Make sure those back teeth aren't touching. And maybe we drop the tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Unfurrow your brow. Make sure those facial features are soft and gentle. This is your daily reminder to let go of any little tight tension points. We tend to hold on to our stress in such subtle ways. Sometimes we just need a little reminder of where we're holding and just to let it go. So shoulders down, jaw unlocked, tongue dropped from the roof of the mouth, facial features soft, neck long, space between your shoulder and your ears, and breathe. Take your right hand and bring it onto your abdomen so you can feel the breath flowing. Inhale. And exhale. Feeling that hand rise and fall in time with your breath. Take the left hand, bring it to your heart. Feel that heartbeat slowing down. A gentle pulse. In time with that rise and fall. Trying to calm the body. And as we're working on posture today, I want the theme to be balance. And I know we've done that before, but I don't necessarily mean balance as in we're standing on one leg. I want balance throughout your practice, balance throughout your day-to-day, -day, balance in your mind. And sometimes creating a nice, strong posture is a little bit of a balance, because it's hard. We spend so much time over a car steering wheel or gazing at our phones that we do end up almost giving ourselves a brand new posture. So the balance between doing those things and just checking in and making sure that we have a nice, healthy posture and that we're not doing any damage to our bodies. Drop those hands down by your side. Blink those eyes open. And here we are, we're gonna start with your posture right now, straight off the bat. So I want you to look down at your feet. Make sure that they're facing straight ahead. What you wanna avoid is turning the feet out like little dancer feet or like little ducks. If you are a dancer, you might find that actually it's really hard for you to bring your feet facing straight ahead. But just try as hard as you can. I like to have my feet slightly apart, maybe about hip width. You can also bring your feet together, whatever feels best for you. And we're just grounding down through the feet. So what I mean by that is that there's equal weight distribution through the feet. And you probably don't think that much about how much weight is distributed between the feet. But if we think on a day-to-day -day basis how we stand, I'm sure that some of you probably put extra weight. Maybe you stand like this, and then you're putting extra weight on the right, and you're kind of slouching into one hip, and that can create an uneven balance in the hips. So I just want you to really, really focus down on those feet and make sure that they are both evenly distributed. Both legs are nice and straight. Make sure those knees are underneath your arm above your ankles, not underneath. We don't want knees underneath ankles. That would definitely not be good posture. So ankles are underneath your knees and knees are underneath your hips. So we're stacking our joints like blocks and it might seem like a really simple thing to say, but you'd be surprised how much time we spend like this or like this. And you know, if you have lordosis and you have that bend in the back, if you're pregnant, you might find that actually this is quite comfortable. I particularly find this quite comfortable. And you might find as well that this is quite comfortable, creating a kind of shell, tucking that bum in so it disappears. So what we want to really do is just make sure that our joints are on top of each other. They're not all higgledy-piggledy. So ankles under knees, under hips, under shoulders. 
And then with your neck, you want to make sure that neck is not all the way out like you're looking at your phone or driving a car. So just to make sure, take your finger and just push that neck so it's in line, with your chin is in line with the rest of your body. Arms down by your side. The most important thing in your entire alignment is your pelvis. It's the bowl of your body. It's this little cauldron here. It's, it holds everything. So what I want you to do is place your right hand on the front of your pelvis and your left hand on the back. And I just want you to envision that your pelvis is a glass of water. So if we stand sticking our bum out and kind of arching our back like we might if we're pregnant or if we've got lordosis, you're spilling that water all the way down the front of the body. If we tuck our bum in and we slouch, we're spilling water all the way down the backs of our body. So what I want you to do is very gently, just start to rock that pelvis. Imagining it's that glass of water and you're gonna bring it into the center where you're not spilling a drop, making sure everything is nice and aligned. You're in a nice straight line. You feel tall. The inhale, we lengthen through our spine. We drop our shoulders down. We feel really, really nice and long. Step yourselves to the top, to the back of your mat. Take a nice deep breath. Make sure that you're nice and stacked like blocks on top of each other. Look at your feet. Make sure those feet have weight evenly distributed. Inhale, I'm cutting my head up. I'm just gonna step to the side of my mat. Move this a little bit so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Take a nice deep inhale here at the top of your mat. Make sure that you're nice and aligned. We're gonna raise those arms up towards the sky. Take them wide if you can. If you've not got the space, that's fine. Drawing your palms up above your head. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but keep this nice alignment here and start to gaze up at your thumbs, keeping that neck long. And maybe you need to bend the arms slightly. That is fine as well. If it means that that's what you need to do to keep that back long. Take a nice deep breath, start to, Push the hips forward slightly and follow that gaze back towards the back wall. Take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, we're gonna bend the knees and start to fold forward. Take the elbows out to the side and fold forward into your Uttanasana, into your forward fold. So important here, if we're working on our posture, bent knees are better because if we start to straighten the legs and we've got a curve in the spine, we're instantly messing with our posture. So let's bend the knees for now and glue the torso onto the thighs, however bent your knees need to be to get there. And just take hold of your elbows and gently sway from side to side. Inhale. And exhale, lovely, well done. Inhale. And exhale, trace those hands down onto the mat. And we're gonna inhale, start to stroke your hands up your feet towards your shin straight, the legs flat in the back, draw the navel in and gaze straight ahead. Make sure there's a flat back here. So you can either bring your hands onto your thighs, your shins, or if you've got really good posture, you can bring them onto the floor. Take a nice deep breath, bend the knees, bring yourself back into your forward fold position, tuck that torso to the foot. Inhale, stroke the hands, up the feet, up the shins, maybe to the thighs, gaze straight ahead, flat back, draw that navel in. Make sure, if I was to put a hot cup of tea on your back, you wouldn't spill it. Inhale, dropping down, forward fold, bend your knees. Last time, trace the palms up the feet towards the shins and the thighs, gaze straight ahead, inhale. Exhale, back to your forward fold, bring your palms onto the mat and you're gonna to start to walk the hands forward into a plank position. Make sure your body's in a nice straight line. Let me just shift my mat. So body in a nice straight line in your plank position. What do I mean by that? So plank is a really good one for your core and you can't have good posture without your core. It's so, so important. So making sure that your wrists are underneath your shoulders, that bum is tucked in, core drawn in and let's hold here. Take a nice deep breath and you're just gonna gently rock forward on your toes and back in time with your breath. Inhale, drawing that core in. Exhale, inhale, feel that engagement, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the core, and back, nice straight line. So try not to do this, try not to do this, try and keep yourself nice and tight. Imagine that your 
a plank, a literal plank. And back. And one more. And from here, hold your plank. What we're going to do, keeping that trunk nice and sturdy, so that nice section here, your back and your core and your abs, we're going to take our right knee first and then our left. So we're going to do alternate knees. You're going to go one, draw the knee in, back. Two, and back. And we're going to do six of those. And let's go one. Gorgeous. Two, keep that trunk steady. Three, only moving the legs. Four, five, and six. Really nice. Shift all your weight onto the left and bring yourself over into your side plank. Stack those hips. If you want to drop the left knee, then please feel free. Make sure that your hips are stacked on top of each other and your wrist and knee are in alignment. So I know it's early on in the class, but if you are feeling daring, please do feel free to bring that right leg up and take a balance. If you want to, hold that side plank wherever you are. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring yourself back into your plank position. Tuck that core in nice and aligned. Lovely, and let's go again with our knees. One, two, keep that breath flowing. Three, four, five, and six. Lovely, shift all the way over onto the right. Lift those hips, side plank. And remember, if you want to drop the knee, please do make sure that the knee and the wrist are aligned. Hips stacked on top of each other. And if you want to try and lift yourself up into a balance here, then do feel free to give that a go. And let's give it five, four, three, two, and one. Back into your plank position. Really nice, take a nice deep breath. And send those sit bones up towards the sky into your downward dog. And let's bend the knees here as well. So unless you are a very seasoned yogi, that's really, 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 really sure that your down dog is absolutely perfect. Let's just do bent knees for now and just start to walk those feet up. So I find bent knees and down dog, especially at the beginning of the class, is actually really, really nice because it really allows me to think into my posture. So what I mean by that is what we tend to do is really focus on getting straight legs and drawing our heels down towards the mat, which actually isn't the, the aim in down dog. What we want here is a nice straight line from our tailbone all the way down to our hands. And the absolute easiest way to achieve that is by bending the knees slightly. So we really focus on that part of the body first. So spread those fingers wide and start to push into the outside of your hands and your little fingers, decompressing through the shoulders and the spines. You're really pushing down. Tuck that head between your arms so that you're looking between those bent legs and feel that straight line all the way up your back. When you push down through your palms, try not to hyperextend those elbows. Maybe your elbows are slightly bent out to the side. Really, really focus on straightening that back. And if you feel at any point like your back is so straight, you can very gently start to straighten the legs if you'd like to. Feel free to keep them bent though. You can keep them bent forever if you want to. And let's take a nice deep inhale here. And we're actually going to raise our heels off the ground, up towards the sky. We're going to stretch out the backs of the hamstrings and the calves. Exhale, draw the heels down towards the mat. Inhale, lift those heels. Exhale, lower, dropping those heels down. And lift. And lower to so really feel that intense pull on the back of the hamstrings. It's quite a delicious stretch. I really enjoy this one. Up on your heels and dropping down. And once more, and back. And let's take three of our little circles that we like to do. So we're gonna drop forward into our plank position, core engaged, hover those knees towards the floor, but don't drop them down, send the bum back. Sit bones up towards the sky, down facing dog. Two more of those. Inhale, drop forward, plank position, core engaged. Drop your knees, but just hover them. Exhale to send that bum back towards your heels. Hips up towards the sky. And take a nice deep breath. Last time, plank position. Take a nice deep inhale. Start to drop those knees. Send the bum back. Downward facing. Gorgeous. Walk those feet out. Maybe give the hips a little wiggle. 
do whatever feels good drop the knees into an all fours position maybe you want to give your wrists a little shake maybe you want to give them a little stretch out i have quite weak wrists so i like to stretch them in between poses so really don't feel bad if you have to do that because i completely relate so you're going to stack your joints again so remember what we're really really focusing on today is not how deep we can get into our stretches or how big we can get our splits or our back bends we're really focusing on our alignment so you want to make sure those wrists are under the shoulders knees are under the hips and then let's really work on that flat back draw that navel in towards the spine making ourselves a proper little table here inhale and i want you to imagine that if i put a hot cup of coffee on your tea on your back if you move your spine from this table position you're going to spill it so we're going to keep it nice and straight to begin with while we practice that ujjayi breath so inhale exhale breathing out through the mouth like you're fogging up a mirror and again keeping that back nice and flat inhale And as you're breathing, spreading those fingers wide and really pushing down through the palms, the knees and the tops of the feet. Or you can flex your feet as well if that feels better and really push into those toes. I want you to feel like you're grounding down into the mat to the point where you could actually take off. Inhale here. And this time when we exhale, keep the mouth closed and fogging up in the back of your throat for your ujjayi breath. And again, inhale. You might almost sound like you're snoring or like a little pig snort and that's fine. I do that all the time. That's completely natural and it means that you're doing it properly. Inhale one more time. Let's inhale, drop our navel to the floor, gaze up to the sky. Just really loosen up for a second in our cat cow. Exhale, arching upwards, crown of the head towards the floor, down the shoulders. So for good posture, we really have to get into every nook and cranny of our body. So if you want to just do your cat cow, feel free. If you want to get a little bit weird, if you want to just draw circles with your hips, circles with your wrists, circles with your head, really, really go wild. Get into every single part of your body that really needs loosening up. Feel free. This is your moment to just get a little bit, a little bit weird and do what you want to do. And really, really stretch out. Let's take two more breaths here. Maybe you want to turn the wrists. I know that's an acquired taste, but I quite like that one. Maybe you want to bounce the bum back on the heels, a few little body waves. Maybe you want to come all the way forward into your cobra and back. Whatever feels good for you. Make sure that you're really waking up every part of your body. And then let's gently bring ourselves back into our all fours position and tuck that right foot under. We're just gonna kick up towards the sky. And maybe this is just where we're at today. Try and keep those hips aligned. So remember today we're just working on our alignment. So what you wanna try is not to open that hip. You wanna keep it in line with the other hip. So maybe you're just happy here and maybe you wanna go a little further, take your left hand, walk that left hand out. And maybe you wanna lift the left arm so that you're balancing so in Pilates, this is kind of called a Superman stretch. And if you want to, you can take that left arm all the way back and take hold of your right foot and kick that foot into your hand. But try in here to keep those hips aligned as you're lifting, whichever version you're in. Give me a few breaths. Really good. Try and go straight ahead, not like me. Give me one more breath here. Let go of your hand if you're holding it. Keep that foot up and flex. Take a nice deep breath and ground down through the palms, equally distributing the weight. Tuck that left foot under and push up into your three-legged dog. So what do we want here? We want those legs, we want those hips aligned. So if you want to straighten your leg, then you can, but make sure that the hips stay completely aligned so you're not stacking them, you're not opening them, you want to keep them in a nice straight line. So maybe it means that you won't be lifting your leg as high as you might if you were opening the hips. Take a nice deep breath, try and draw that heel down towards the mat, evenly distribute the weight between the hands. Take a nice deep breath here. Draw that knee in towards your chest, 
plant the right foot, make sure the knee is above the right ankle and turn that left foot out. Squaring those hips forward, warrior one. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, sit deep. If you're not sure about your hip alignment, take a finger and thumb on your hip bones and steer them to the front like car headlights. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, I'm just gonna switch sides so you can actually see what I'm doing. And take a nice deep breath here as we inhale, we're opening our hips out to the side, warrior two, arms are in line with our shoulders. Tuck your tailbone under. Deep inhale, exhale, leaning forward, gaze down those front fingertips, turn the right palm to face up to the sky and pivot back, send the left arm down the back of the left leg, right arm up, reverse warrior. If you want to take your bind here, take a twist, half bind, left arm around your spine to touch your right thigh, but try and keep those legs nice and aligned, inhale, exhale. Really nice, take a nice deep breath. Unravel the arms back to your warrior two and pivot all the way forward, palms open. Take a deep breath here, straighten both legs, bring yourself into your triangle pose. So your triangle is all about hip alignment. So what you wanna try and achieve here, you can place your hand on your spine and just try and open that chest. So if you're doing that, you can take hold of your ankle. Just really try and open the chest. Try and make sure that you're not slumping down. Once you think your chest is open, your hips are aligned, you're kind of pushing them into place. Imagine that someone's put you in a toaster, so you don't want to burn each edge. Reach that left arm up, and what you want to do is stack those arms on top of each other, so make sure it's not coming forward or back. It's in a nice straight line, and try and gaze up at your extended arm. Inhale, and maybe you're not this far down. Maybe you can't bring your hand to your ankle just yet, and that's fine. Just make sure wherever you are, that your hips are nice and aligned. And if you're uncomfortable in this position, you're almost definitely doing it right, because this is a horrible pose. I'm not gonna lie to you. Triangle is, it's not, it's not nice, but it's quite satisfying. Take a nice deep breath here. And we're gonna bring ourselves back up into our warrior two, but with arm, with legs straight. Bring your fingers onto your hips and steer your hips to the front. So now, both legs straight. You can, if you want to, step that back foot in a little bit. So we keep those feet flat on the mat, hips squared to the front. Tuck that tailbone in, making sure that that body is nice and aligned here. Take a nice deep breath and start to hinge forward through the hips, keeping your back straight. So don't compromise by coming down too low. So maybe you only come down to here. Maybe you can come down the whole way, keeping that back straight. So if you have your camera on, if you've got a mirror nearby, you can really check in on yourself and just make sure you're not kind of slumping forward. You want to make sure you're in that nice straight line and take a nice deep breath. And maybe you want to reach those arms out in front here and start to pull forward. Deep inhale. Try not to bring, what's very tempting is to shift all of your weight into your right foot and try not to do that. Try and evenly distribute that weight. Inhale. And if you want to, you can start to bring those hands down onto the mat. If you do have blocks or anything, feel free to use them. And if you need to step your foot in a little bit, then feel free to do that too. Try and keep both legs nice and straight. And bring yourself down to where it feels comfortable. So maybe you want to bring your hands onto your thigh. Maybe they come all the way down onto your shin or your ankle. Maybe you want to fold the whole way forward. Whichever version, really gently inching yourself into it. Make sure that the Weight between the feet is evenly distributed. Hips are aligned straight to the head. Inhale. Exhale. Really lovely, everybody. Inhale. And just stay in your pyramid. Take a nice deep breath. Place those palms flat. Step back with the left. Step back with the right. Plank position. Making sure that you're stacking those joints. I'm just going to switch sides again. So making sure that those wrists are underneath the shoulders, really nice. And just hold here, take a deep breath. Exhale, drop those knees down onto the mat. Give yourself a little wiggle through the waist, a little mini cat cow, a little waking up of your limbs. We're gonna do everything on the other side. So kick that left foot under, and then you're gonna kick that leg up behind. So remember what we're working on is our alignment, not how far we can kick up. So try and make sure those hips stay nice and even. 
So maybe this is where you want to stay for now, drawing that navel in. And maybe you want to walk those fingers forward. And maybe this is good for you. Maybe you want to lift that right arm. You'll find as well one side is a little less wobbly. And you'll probably work that out once you lift the leg and the arm. So we're lifting opposite leg, opposite arm. And maybe you want to reach that right arm back. Take hold of the left foot and try and kick into that left foot and lift. And it doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are is perfect. Take a nice deep breath and exhale. Try and keep that lifted foot flexed. And if you can keep the bottom foot flexed as well, then that is amazing. That's really, really hard to do. Take a nice deep breath. One more here. Let go of your foot if you're holding it. Keep that foot flexed. Ground down through the palms. We're shifting the weight nice and evenly. Tuck that right toe under. Push up three-legged. So remember, we're keeping those hips alive. So what we don't want to do is open the hips today. So if you want to keep that knee bent, then please do if you want to straighten it. Also amazing, into your three-legged. Make sure those palms are evenly distributing the weight. Hips are nice and aligned. Take a deep inhale here. And as you exhale, draw that knee in towards the chest. Plant the left foot. Make sure the left knee is above the left ankle. Turn the right foot out. Warrior one now on the left hand side. Square those hips to the front, arms up in line with your ears. So remember, if you're not sure about your hip alignment, so if you're a bit like all over the place, finger and thumb on those hip bones, square them to the front like car headlights. Try and make sure your heels are in a nice straight line. Sit into that front knee bend. Hips square to the front, arms up. Try and tuck that tailbone under. Inhale, exhale. So warrior one, you can give yourself a back bend. That's okay in this pose. Take a nice deep inhale. Let's open our arms out to the side. Warrior two, when we want to tuck that tailbone under, we don't want to back bend here. We want our body in a nice straight line. We want that that spine nice and straight. Remember that neutral pelvis we practiced at the beginning. Arms in line with your shoulders. Take a deep inhale here. Neck long. Gaze down those front fingertips and start to lean forward. Turn that left palm to face up to the sky and pivot back. Right arm down the back of the right leg. Left arm up and over in your reverse warrior. Gorgeous, well done. Everyone on Zoom that I can see you're looking wonderful. And everyone on Facebook that I can't see, I'm sure you're looking wonderful as well. You can bring your right arm, if you want, around your spine in a half bind to touch your left thigh. Make sure that you're keeping yourself upright. You're not slouching forward. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, open those arms back into your warrior two. Turn the palms out, straight the front leg, and bring yourself into your triangle pose. So remember, if you want to work a little bit on your alignment here, you can take hold of your ankle, bring your right arm into your spine and just push those hips forward, making them in line with the rest of your body. And if it does feel uncomfortable, it's probably right. And then you can bring the palm wherever it is. If it's in line with your knee or your shin or your thigh, that's perfect. As long as you're nice and aligned, imagine it's like you've been popped in a toaster. Try and gaze up at that extended arm, which is the hard bit. Take a deep breath, try and make sure there's even distribution of weight between those feet. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, let's bring ourselves back up into our warrior two, but with straight legs. Fingers on your hips, steer them to the front. And if you want to step that back foot in a little bit, keeping those legs nice and straight, then please feel free. We're just gonna turn that back foot in as well. Take a nice deep inhale here. Tuck that tailbone under, and we're gonna to start to pivot forward so you're hinging at the hips. So whenever I say hinging at the hips, I imagine I'm like a Barbie doll. You know how they just have joints. They're completely solid, and they're just joints, and they start to hinge. So any kind of those dolls that are just plastic with legs and arms that move just at the joints, that's what we wanna do. So you're hinging, 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 keeping that back nice and flat. And maybe you come to here, maybe you come all the way down into a halfway stretch. You can bring your arms out. Try and make sure those feet have weight evenly distributed between them. Take a nice deep breath. And if you want to, you can drop those hands down and start to walk 
start to draw the torso towards the thigh, try and keep that pack nice and straight. And you'll find as well, it might be easier on one leg. So for example, um, I've said it before, but I did a really bad hamstring injury on my right two years ago, and it still plays up now. So in my left, I find a lot easier to get a straight back in a deep stretch. So really, really trust which side you might get deeper in, and don't worry if you can't do it on both sides. Take a nice deep inhale. Exhale, try and fold into that pyramid. Keeping those hips in line, try and keep the weight distributed between the legs. And lift the head flat and the back and walk the hands round to the center into your wide leg forward fold, both feet facing straight ahead. So maybe you're just happy in your wide leg forward fold with a flat back gazing straight ahead. And maybe you want to start hinging forward towards the floor. So our wide leg forward fold is in any variation wonderful for our posture because it really elongates our spine taking a nice deep breath and exhale start to pull the crown of the head towards the floor really hinging forward this is also preparation for your tripod headstand try and bring your hands there in line with your feet really nice deep inhale Bringing yourself towards the mat. Really breathe into it and you'll feel that pull on the back of your hamstrings. It's a really nice stretch. Start to walk those hands back into your upright and walk the hands back to the front, bending that front knee. Hands on either side of that front foot and you're going to step back into your plank position. Take a nice deep breath, tuck everything in, make sure that you're nice and aligned and just hold here, take a breath. And then we're gonna drop our knees, our chest and our chin and just push forward into a cobra. So our cobra is our palms on the, on the mat and we're extending through the lower back and the shoulders opening up the chest. We're also engaging the glutes. So what I want you to do is point those toes so that you're engaging your legs and lifting the knees off the mat. So if this is too much of a deep back bend, you can drop onto your forearms, into your sphinx. So you look like one of those statues in Egypt, that's fine as well. Make sure, just make sure that you're engaging those legs. We're really working those glutes and getting a deep stretch in the lower back. Take a nice deep breath and exhale. So maybe you wanna stay here and maybe you want a little bit of movement to your cobra and if you do, Gently walk your hands a little wider. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, we fold forward. Inhale, lift. Exhale, so you feel this through your spine. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And maybe you want to try one with no hands. And lift on your inhale. You want to get up as high, or maybe you will. And exhale. And once more, exhale, gently drop those hands and you're going to bring your heels in towards your bum. Okay, you guys know what's coming. So we're going to take our bow pose, which is a really lovely heart opener and it's really nice for our chest and our shoulders for pulling our shoulders and our chest open, which is really, really important for our posture. So you're very welcome. Um, if you want to take one leg in and just hold that one leg with your arm, then please do feel free. Otherwise, we're going to draw both heels in towards our bums. You're going to bring your chest down, reach back with your hands, and take those hands to the outside of your feet. Gaze straight ahead. Inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to lift up into your bow pose. Pulling those legs up behind you and try and keep those feet even. Gaze straight ahead, chest open, neck long. And breathe. We're not going to hold this for long, I promise. Inhale. It's a very intense back pose. Back bend. Exhale. Inhale. Try and keep those feet aligned. Exhale. And gently drop down. Bring your arms down by your side. Left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. You might feel like your heart beats really fast when you've taken an intense back bend. It's because they really, really give you a surge of energy. 
even though they feel like they take it out of you. And drop the right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. And very gently bring your palms in front. And we're running out of time, so I'm not going to do the shoulder. Actually, no, do you know what I am? We're going to draw those heels in towards our bums. Take hold of the inside of your feet for a nice deep shoulder stretch. Gaze okay, straight ahead. Inhale here. So we're on the inside of our feet now, not the outside. So you're not going to lift up as high. It's going to get deeper into the shoulders. And I have to say, it's not the most comfortable of poses, but it's a really good one for your shoulders. So take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, lift. And try and keep those feet aligned. And let's go for three, two, and one. Gently drop down, left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. Right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. Take your palms in front of you, push down through your palms. Draw your heels together, knees apart, and just push back into your child's pose, reaching your arms out in front, forehead down onto the mat, deep breath. Gently start to walk those hands back into an upright position, so you're on your knees. We're going to take a camel pose, which is a nice deep back bend, but what a camel pose does is it undoes any hunching that we might do throughout the day. So if you feel a little bit like you're slouchy, we're all a bit slouchy. And I imagine that we're probably feeling really slouchy at the moment because we're at home all day. So we're just gonna undo all that slouchiness and we're gonna take our camel. So bring yourself, well you can bring yourself wherever you'd like. I'm gonna bring myself into the middle of my mat. You're gonna come up onto your knees. So what you wanna do is make sure your knees are hip width apart. Your feet and your calves are parallel behind you like train tracks. Bring your palms into the small of your back. You're going to take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, you're going to start to look up towards the sky. And as you gaze all the way back, you're going to push those hips forward. And maybe this is where we go today to undo that hunching, gazing up. And maybe you want to push forward a little more and drop those hands back onto your heels and push those hips forward and breathe and wherever you are in your camel this is a very very deep back bend it will release a lot of emotion from you so take as long or as little as you'd like and always come out the way you came in by walking those hands up to the small of your back and bringing yourself all the way back down and around into a child's pose heels together knees apart so if you're still with me deep breath and exhale Let's take a nice deep inhale, start to walk the hands up into the small of the back, bring yourself all the way back up, heels together, knees apart, reach those arms forward and bring your hands down onto the mat, forehead down onto the mat, child's pose. Deep breath, start to walk those hands back again into your kneeling position. So options here, we're just gonna finish with our cow face pose, which is really good for aligning your shoulders, but we're only gonna do a cow face arms, we're not gonna do the legs. So you can sit cross-legged or however you're feeling comfortable. In fact, if you have a chair, feel free to take a chair and sit on the chair for this one. Um, you wanna make sure that, that spine is nice and straight so we're not slouching forward or sticking our bums out. If you're on your, on your knees, that's lovely. What we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna show you from the back. Once you're in the position that you're comfortable in, deep inhale, raise your right arm up towards the sky. And as you exhale, draw that palm down between your shoulder blades. Take a nice deep breath, take that left arm out to the side and then bring it all the way up the back. So what you're trying to do is meet those two hands in the middle. And if you can't, do not worry. Just trying to bring them together as much as possible. Keep that spine nice and straight. Keep your neck long. If you've got a strap, you can use a strap here. And if you do want to practice this uh, stretch again, you can use a tie. Um, you can use, well, anything really, a pair of tights. 
and breathe, deep inhale. And every exhale, try and inch those fingers closer together, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, gently let go, bring your arms out to the side, open your chest and fold yourself forward onto the mat, just bringing your forehead down. Exhale, start to peel up through the spine. Inhale, raise that left arm up and draw the left hand down between the shoulder blades. Exhale, reach the right arm behind and try and link those fingers behind your back. So this one side might feel a little bit tighter. Try and keep that back nice and straight. Gazing straight ahead, inhale. And with every exhale, we try and bring those fingers closer together. Deep breath. Take one more breath here, inhale. Gently unlink the fingers, bring your arms down by your side and you're just gonna untuck the legs from wherever you are. If you are sitting in a chair, bring yourself down onto your mat. Feet together, knees together, knees bent, arms down by your, arms in line with your legs and you're just gonna gently roll yourself back down onto your mat. Hinging down, peeling yourself down, straighten those legs. Or maybe you want to quickly give yourself a little twist through the hips. You know, it doesn't need twisting. So it is nice to just give yourself a bring both knees over to the left and get it to the right. So remember when we're twisting, we're compressing our organs, releasing toxins so that when we undo the twist, fresh blood rushes through us. So it's nice to just finish with a little twist. And then gently bring those knees over to the right and gaze to the left. So I like to think of it as a dirty dishcloth being wrung out and then fresh water flowing through when we undo the twist. Inhale. Really feel that twist from the base of your spine up to your neck. And gently bring yourself back to center and let's now stretch out, nice straight line. You guys know the drill by now, full body stretch, point those fingers, point those toes. Imagine someone's got you by the fingertips, someone's got you by the toes. They're trying to pull you from one side of the room to the other. You can't get away, there's tension in every single part of your body. Keep stretching, keep stretching, reaching, reaching, reaching. I want you to think about everything that's annoyed you, every bit of tension, everything that is getting on your nerve, pour it all into the stretch. You should be in pain from how tense this stretch is. It's the biggest stretch you're doing in the class. Tension in everything, including your face. Tiny beady eyes, tiny scrunched up nose, clench the jaw, do all the things I told you not to do at the beginning. We're gonna build it all up, all up, all up. Five, four, keep stretching, three, five, two and a half. And one, let go, let everything go. Bring your arms down by your side, palms facing up to the sky, feet falling open. And breathe, inhale. And exhale. If you need a jumper, some socks, a drink of water, a blanket, please feel free to take that now. I fully recommend taking Shavasana lying on your back unless you are pregnant past the first trimester, in which case, please take it in a fetal position on your left hand side with a pillow between your knees. Otherwise, let's melt down into our mat. So I'm gonna bring myself to seated so that I can talk to you properly, but all of you guys, please do stay lying down. Close your eyes, bring those palms facing upwards by your side. And let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose to expand your abdomen. And send all of your air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling like a glass all the way to the top. And exhale, reverse the breath. Navel to spine. And again, inhale. And exhale. 
Let's try and bring ourselves back to where we were at the beginning of the class. Remembering our intention of balance. Remembering what we did to check in with our posture. And then we take that imaginary broom and we sweep everything clear from our minds, empty room, with only our breath flowing in and out. Bring ourselves back to releasing those stress points, making sure the shoulders are down away from the ears, creating length for the neck. Head is light and empty, free of thoughts and worries as your facial features soften and become gentle. No tightness or tension, unlocking the jaw dropping the tongue down from the roof of the mouth and allowing the back teeth to unclench. Bringing our attention to our toes and our feet. Releasing tension and just switching off. Switching off key points in our bodies from our ankles, our calves, our knees and our thighs. Switch off. Almost like a robot running out of batteries, you become limp and light. You don't have to hold tightness for anything or anyone. Switching off your lower back and feeling each vertebrae melt down into the mat one by one, all the way up, following up to your upper spine. Switching off each vertebrae trickling down up to your shoulders, feel those shoulder blades glide down the mat, melting into the mat like lava, becoming one with the ground, drawing those shoulders down from the ears, creating that long neck, freeing tension in the head and the face and the jaw, switching off everything. Arms, light weight at our side, switching off the palms so they fall open and each fingertip unravels. Everything switched off apart from our chest and our abdomen. And we take our focus there and we start to release any tension we have and allow only that slow and steady rhythm of our breath to inhale and exhale. Guide that last remaining part of our body into a calm and peaceful rhythm. And finally switch off and gently drift into your mat, becoming one with the ground. And as we lay here, let's allow ourselves this moment to breathe to indulge in this complete and utter relaxation. Gently wiggle the fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your bodies. Draw your knees into your chest and gently rock from side to side, bringing yourself over onto the right hand side into your fetal position. And then gently bring yourself up to seated. You can keep the eyes closed if you want to. Bring your palms onto your knees. And let's take a nice deep inhale to lengthen, tuck that tailbone under. And exhale. And remembering all those key points, keeping that 
chin in line with our body, keeping that tailbone tucked in, pelvis neutral, inhale. Exhale, deep sigh. And once more, inhale. And let it all go. Draw your palms together at heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me today. I really hope that the posture points were helpful for you and that you leave this class feeling like you're walking a little bit taller and like you're feeling a little bit less slouched. It is so lovely to connect with you all as always. And as usual, if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to do throughout the week in the flows, then drop them in the comment section. Because actually I've run out of suggestions, so I need you guys to tell me what to do. If you want to practice anything, just tell me and I'll make it happen. This is your class, it's your time, whatever you guys want to do. Um, so if you're on Facebook, just pop it in a comment under this video. It doesn't have to be now, it can be tomorrow or the next day. Um, if you're on Zoom, uh, you can pop it in now before I end the meeting. Otherwise, you can pop it in tomorrow. Everyone, have a lovely rest of your evening. Um, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Namaste. Andrea, we did splits yesterday, but um, if you have Facebook, the class is on there as a catch up and I'm probably going to refresh the splits at the end of the week so that we can get deeper into them because I think one class is not enough. So we will do that class again. Um, but if you want to catch up, the class is on Facebook and on YouTube now. On YouTube, I think it's just with the date, so it'll be yesterday's date. Um, but yes, we did splits last night and we did legs and glutes the day before. So um, if you do both of those classes, then you'll feel like you're ready to go. But we are gonna cover splits again. We're gonna come back to it. Don't worry, we will do it again. Yes, we will do splits again, Sarah, do not worry. I feel like people, if you do like a one-off class, it can be a little bit disheartening because then you're, you've got no follow-up. So we will do it again. Oh, thank you so much. Yoga for running. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have a look at that because actually I do have quite a lot of runners. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna end the meeting now because I can hear that my baby has just woken up, which is obviously fa fabulous. Um, but yes, we will copy, we will go splits again. Um, lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for your practice. Mwah.